Hello everyone, uh, Light Blight here, and I wanted to highlight a, uh, a game that just came out. Uh, as you can probably tell, it is called Digital, A Love Story. Um, the 1988 date here is um, a bit of a um, uh, red herring, or whatever you want to call it. The, the game, I, I believe this game just came out, like literally a matter of days ago, which would make it uh, an April 2010 release. Uh, and yes, I do encourage the use of 2010, not 2010. Uh, so this game, as you can probably already tell, tries to mimic the, um, well, this this Ami workbench might give it away that y you can probably tell it's a ripoff of the uh, Amiga look and feel. It actually looks more like a Commodore 64 game uh, right here, right in this opening screen. But once you start getting into it, you'll see it's more of a, a Commodore Amiga kind of look. So you can, uh, let me just go ahead and start the game. Uh, it asks you for a screen name. I'll go ahead and use my usual uh, name. And yeah, it, it asks you for your actual first and last name. These aren't transmitted online anywhere. They're just for in-game use. This is, this is a locally run game. It's not a network game or anything like that. I'll just go ahead and type in some junk information. But you can, I, I think you're pretty safe typing in your real name. I don't think the game transmits that anywhere. Um, so here we go. So this is, um, as you, again, as you can probably tell, this is meant to sort of emulate the look of Amiga Workbench. Uh, the game constantly keeps a, a soundtrack running up here, and you can see what sound is playing in the upper right. There's no way to actually control what music is playing. It's just, um, it just sort of plays different musical tracks as appropriate, depending on what's going on. Uh, right now, you know, this is a track called Stars Come Up and Brother Android, but that'll change. You can close that, and you can click on the music icon up here to see what's playing if you're curious. You can also pause it, but I like to leave the music running. Uh, so what's the game all about? I mean, you know, you just kind of get dumped into this, uh, uh, you know, GUI, and it's like, well, what, what is the game about? What do you do? Well, it's mostly reading messages, and you'll notice, indeed, besides the music icon up there, which isn't really plot-related at all, all you start off with is just a messages list. And most of the game is reading messages. If any of you remember that really old game, Portal, not the not the new one, not the one with Gladys and the cake is a lie and all that. Uh, I'm talking about a. Uh, it was originally released as a CGA, like a four-color CGA game for the PC, something like 20 years ago. Um, and it's kind of, if you remember that game at all, it's kind of like that, in that most of the gameplay just consists of reading messages that are sent to you. Um, so like when you start off the game, you have these two messages, and you know, you've just gotten this computer, right? So Mr. Wong sends you a message, and he's like, hey, first name, you have your computer set up, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I mean, the whole point here is, um, mostly the game is about dialing into BBSs. If any of you remember BBSs, uh, a lot of this, uh, a majority of this is dialing into bulletin boards and sending and receiving messages. So this first message here has a dialer that you can download, and lo and behold, it you know, just kind of installs a dialer program. Uh, and welcome to your new Ami, in other words, your new Amiga. And here's a, an overview of the user interface. You close the window, you click on this. One little minor carp that I might make is that you can't drag these windows around. You can't actually, you know, click and drag between windows or resize them. All you can really do is just close them with this square up here. Um, so, you know, it's not a full featured GUI necessarily. Um, yeah, click the pinwheel icon at the top of the screen. Yeah, um, so up here, this is just to save your game, uh, which you don't actually really need to do because, first of all, I don't think you can get stuck in this game. Uh, it's not like a... Um, you, you can't die in this game. A couple of bad things happen, but I think there are ways to work around them. I don't think you can actually get completely stuck. And then this is kind of the game's system menu. You can toggle between windowed and full screen mode. One interesting undocumented feature that I just happened to find out by chance, I didn't find it documented anywhere. If you press F, as in Frank, on your keyboard, that will toggle between windowed and full screen mode as well. Uh, you can also turn scan lines on and off. I've just turned them off so you can see it makes things look a little more solid. Um, actually, I, I must confess, I like the, even though it's kind of cheesy, I like playing with the scan lines turned on, just because it gives it that added retro feel. Of course, you can change the, the volume, including the modem volume, you can change your screen name or your real name, or you can turn off Workbench, which takes you back to the main menu. So, again, you know, the game is mostly about just uh, getting messages and dialing into bulletin boards. When you start off, actually, um, I think, yeah, if you want to dial something, you need a phone number to dial. So let me go ahead and 
Yeah, you start off with this phone number here. This is the only BBS you have when you start. It's uh, 6985519. Okay, so 6985519. Um, I don't know if it'll hurt your ears too much, but be warned, uh, the modem whale music is coming, so just be advised, you might want to turn down your speakers. Alright, here we go. Um, a, a few people who, uh, who have commented on this game have mentioned that this modem sound that plays in the game is not the authentic, uh, notice this board is supposed to be a 1200 and 2400 baud modem, uh, or, uh, BBS rather, this BBS only connects with those two speeds. I'm pretty sure the sound that the game plays is not from a modem of that speed, it sounds like either a 14.4k or a 28.8k modem. Um, not that there's a huge difference, but there, there is, um, you know, some difference, obviously, because the modem can tell the difference, so there must be some difference in how it sounds, but... That's just a minor carp. I'm not going to make too big a deal out of it. So, you know, the first bulletin board you start with is Lake City Local, and this is basically just your equivalent of a, uh, a nice local, pretty much messages-only bulletin board system. So let's go ahead and log in. Uh, oh, we have a new account. Oh, uh, yeah, type new because we're new here. Password. I'll just go ahead and use password. Very secure. Uh, but you don't, you don't need to use super secure passwords because uh, nobody, as far as I know, nobody actually tries to crack your passwords in this game. So I just simple. Uh, except for you. Actually, later on, you can crack other people's passwords on a couple of occasions, but anyway. Uh, so here we go. So we, when we first start, we have just three messages. You can click on this button to download the messages. I actually like to download the messages onto my machine so I can read them offline when I'm not connected to a bulletin board. And of course, you can read them online. So, you know, what is a BBS? When you see a message like this, uh, you can click on the reply button to reply to the message. Uh, it doesn't actually show you what your reply is. That that might be a little bit confusing at first. It doesn't show you what your uh, what you type in response. It re you really just kind of have to infer from context what your character in the game typed in your reply. Here's a message from Emilia, and Emilia wrote a nice poem, a four-line poem, and then she says, "Is it any good?" Well, let's and let's reply to her and. We have no idea what we tell her. We, we don't know if we tell her it's any good or not. We just know that we respond. I guess that's good enough. And uh, re let's reply to this person about computer viruses. And usually, uh, see, new, pr new private messages downloaded. Typically, once you send messages to people, they'll actually respond. And now if you go down here to your messages, oh, look, these are private messages that Emil So Amelia and Blue Sky both responded to us. So Blue Sky says something about ARPANET. Yeah, so on. Okay, ARPANET. Great, let's reply again. Sometimes you can make make whole chains of events happen just by constantly replying to people. And Emilia... Um, oh, she's so nice. Uh, the, the love story... You, you Don't forget, there is a love story in this game. The love story is a little bit hokey, I have to say. It is a little bit rushed. Uh, the game is not too long. I finished it in one sitting. You might not. You might know, take a little bit longer. It took me like two or three hours to finish it, but it was just, you know, I, it was interesting, so I finished it all at once. And it's really not that hard. It's not a very difficult game. Uh, so why am I highlighting this? I mean, if you're wondering why I chose to uh, make a video about this game, it's probably not something... I don't know that I can answer that question. It, it, I figure it's probably readily apparent right away why I like this game and why I made a video about it. Um, and if you don't think it's obvious, if you don't see the appeal in a game like this, then I'm not going to try to convince you that it's worth playing, because you probably wouldn't enjoy it. But that's basically what it is. It's basically... Um, I'm tempted to call it a nostalgia game. I know that a lot of people will say it's nostalgic. Um, the, the soundtrack is all chiptunes. By the way, the soundtrack uses some chiptunes from Format, who... Um, He's actually one of my favorite retro chip tune makers. He made a lot of great tunes back in the day, so I, I like the fact that it uses music from him. But there are also others as well, uh, of course. Um, but the thing is, this isn't just a nostalgia game, because the woman who made the game uh, was born, I think, in 1989, when the BBS era was already starting to wind down. Um, and I mean, you know, there were BBSs in the 90s as well, but she would have been, like, not even 10 years old when that was going on. So by the time she had adolescence, BBSs were pretty much already passe and the internet had taken over. So for her, it wasn't nostalgia. It was a work of history. And uh, 
I, I'm really heartened to see a game like this. I really think it's a beautiful game. It's it's flawed. It's not perfect. I'm not going to say it's uh, you know the best game in the world. It's very simple. There's not really much to it. The plot is very straightforward. The interface, as you can see, is pretty simple. The look and feel is pretty uh, plain. Uh, there's not really a lot in the way of sound effects other than the sound of the modem. Um, it's just it's just a very nice little game. Anybody who likes to watch the kind of videos of games that I have been making will probably want to check out this game because I think um, if you enjoy old adventure games and old computer games and old computer culture, I think you'll enjoy a game like this. And if not, if you if you're not really into that kind of thing, then you probably wouldn't enjoy this game. And hey, that's that's fine. You know, it's it's not a game for everyone. But I, I really enjoyed it, and I just wanted to highlight it and recommend it to anyone who uh, who has been watching me for uh, for a while now. All right, I'm out of time, but thanks as always for watching, everyone, and I will see you all later. Take care for now. Bye bye.